Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and uh, welcome to our latest Facebook Live. Um, today is June 3rd. I hope everybody's doing well. It's hard to imagine it's June. Um, I guess the good news on things is that things seem to be getting better in the COVID front. The numbers are down. Um, a lot of good things in that regard, and hopefully things will continue to get good. Um, hope things are moving along on potential vaccine for the uh, little kids, the people under uh, under 12, so that's moving along. I'm, I'm having my beard here, so I'm gonna wear my beard as long as I can, I'll grow a beard as long as I have to wear a mask, so uh, we'll see what happens on the beard. Those of you who know me, <laughs> I kind of look like, uh, interesting, it's, get some character. Anyway, um, it's great to have everybody here. Um, this week, I have cardiac tumors posted because I was uh, I gave my conference on uh, Wednesday, which was yesterday, and I showed a bunch of cardiac tumors. And cardiac tumors are rare, but I thought I'd go through a little bit about that. Also, I um, wanted to also note that I'll put together a lecture on CTSS on cardiac tumors. Also, there's a lot of cases on cardiac tumors. If you go to the teaching file of CTSS, and you, t you can go through it or type in cardiac tumors in the cardiac section and you'll see them. So, um, and then if you have any questions or comments, feel free to add them. And I see John Biacchino is saying hi from home. John is home today. John's one of our super techs from uh, typically the hospital. So, um, you know, cardiac tumors are, are pretty rare, but I will say that we are seeing more of them. So the first thing to think about is you know we often didn't look carefully at the heart particularly uh, with motion related artifact you can you wouldn't see things but with now the studies the acquisition being fast and a lot of gated acquisitions we do see the heart really well even if it's not the area we're looking for so i would like to say that in terms of cardiac tumors every once in a while we evaluate for a cardiac tumor like for, like an echo cardio, echocardiogram might show something or suggest something. We do a CT. Also, we um, do a lot of cases where we're staging patients for tumors like a lymphoma or lung cancer or renal cell carcinoma, and you may end up with cardiac tumors for that as well. Now, if you look at the numbers, and I have some good slides, which I'm not going to show you. We are working on trying to move the slides closer into the presentation. But the frequency of metastasis to the heart versus primary cardiac tumors is anywhere between 50 and 100 times more common. So primary cardiac tumors <clears throat> are relatively infrequent. The most common primary cardiac tumor we think about is an atrial myxoma. So it's a benign tumor which can give emboli. So typically atrial myxomas are resected. They can present uh, in with symptoms related to emboli, they can present as a patient with poor cardiac function if they get large enough and the position where they involve cardiac output, they can present that way, but most are incidental findings. Now, one of the biggest challenges with atrial myxomas is distinguishing them from um, thrombus. Now, thrombus in the heart can be small or large, Typically, thrombi are related to patients who have catheters in place, and thrombus occurs where the catheter tip is. So if, the, if you see a mass that is attached to the catheter, you know it's a thrombus. If you see a mass in the patient in a recent catheterization, you think it's more likely a catheterization. People looked at enhancement, they looked at size, they looked at motion on 4D. All of those, there's a slight difference between thrombus and, uh, and a tumor or myxoma, but Really, it's a too small a difference to make it worthwhile. The most common location for atrial myxomas is gonna be the patient's left atrium. A small percent occur in the right atrium. Solid mass, punctated, can be small or large, can fill in the entire atrium. Now, usually the borders, particularly in the phosphovalis, are good and sharp. I showed a case yesterday in conference with a mass that the person who was being quizzed said, correctly atrial myxoma, they thought that's what it might be, but then if you look carefully, the lesion was too large, filled in too much of the left atrium, but more importantly, grew into the patient's uh, pulmonary veins. If you think about it, atrial myxomas don't grow into the pulmonary veins. 
things that look like atrial myxomas but grow into the pulmonary veins are sarcomas. And this was a primary sarcoma of the heart. When you think about tumors of the heart, we need to think about primary versus metastatic, and we need to think about where they're located. So you think about the covering of the heart. You have the pericardium. So you can have pericarditis. You can have hemopericardium. You're also going to have tumors that metastasize to the pericardium, the most common being breast cancer. You're also going to have tumors that arise in the wall of a cardiac chamber. So angiosarcomas most classically arise in the wall of the patient's right atrium, but can grow into the pericardium, grow into the right ventricle, and grow through the heart even, but right atrial involvement. You can think about metastasis. Metastasis can be intraluminal, think melanoma, renal cell carcinoma. They can go into pericardium. I mentioned think pericardial, think pericardial involvement in patients with breast cancer. They can infiltrate the heart, think about different sarcomas or lymphoma. They can aggressively go from outside in involving pericardium and the subpericardial space as well as the individual chambers. Think lymphoma. So lymphoma is one of the infiltrating processes. When you think about intraluminal lesions, just like a myxoma, but you can see in right atrium, left atrium, left ventricle, right ventricle, you can see metastatic disease, metastatic melanoma is probably going to be the one uh, that you really, um, really, really, really want to think about uh, in that regard. So when we think about tumors, now how do you detect tumors? I think if you have a non-contrast CT, it's really hard to see them, though if it's large enough and surely involves the pericardium, you can recognize something wrong going on. The way you do them is with contrast. The way, um, the way you would do it is you want the chambers filled, so probably a 50 or 60 second delay, injecting four cc's a second so that all the chambers are filled. So you can see anything intraluminal, anything infiltrating the wall of one of the um, four chambers of the heart, or anything growing from the outside, possibly pericardium, inward. That becomes important. We also talk about tumors that arise off valves. Uh, fibroelastoma is the classic one arising off the aortic valve, a pedunculated lesion typically pushing upward. Again, the uh, issues tend to be embolic phenomenon. All of these are removed occasionally. These lesions will also occur in the patient's uh, mitral valve, though that's exceedingly rare. I, I can't really remember seeing a case, but I've read about it. So that becomes very important. And let me say hi to Lidiana from who's in on the West Coast in Palo Alto region. Okay, so that's just something. Hi, hi Lidiana. Um, and Lidiana often, you know, if you go look at Facebook, Facebook, not Facebook Live, but Facebook, Lidiana often is the one who suggests songs. Like I think this morning, she suggested San Francisco by, uh, uh, I forgot who that was, Mackenzie, not Mackenzie Phillips, but uh, John Mackenzie, I think. Um, so going back to the heart a second. So if I want to look for possible tumor, uh, you always want to do a gated acquisition. You want to inject probably in the patient's uh, uh, left arm. You don't want to go too early. You want to go maybe at 50 to 60 seconds, everything being filled, but not too brightly filled. Um, again, um, we also have tumor extending into the heart. So sometimes you can have tumor beginning in the SVC, growing down into the right atrium, even down to left atrium. Uh, the classic tumors would be thymoma, lymphoma, and lung cancer. They grow into the vessels, maybe left subclavian, grow directly into the SVC and straight down into the heart. More commonly, we'll see tumors that grow from beneath the diaphragm up the IVC into the right side of the heart. So the big three to think about would be, no specific order, liver, hepatoma classically, adrenal, primary adrenal cortical carcinoma, growing down the adrenal vein, renal vein, IVC, and primary renal cell carcinoma, particularly clear cell, large aggressive tumors, growing into the renal vein, into the IVC, and they can grow upward, up the IVC, intrahepatic IVC, and into the heart. So when you see a mass in the right atrium, you've got to really be careful because the likelihood is coming from below and being a tumor. There are also uh, tumors like stromal sarcoma of the uterus, which are aggressive, involve the, the pelvic veins, grow up the pelvic veins, grow into the IVC, and grow into the atrium. That's a classic thing, big, dilated, IVC tumor growing straight up into the right atrium. So 
um, you, you want to think about that. So if you see things in the atrium, make sure you're looking above and you're looking below. Is it SVC origin, IVC origin? And that makes you really um, do a better job of giving the differential diagnosis and being a little bit more careful. We also can see tumors, and I showed examples yesterday. One was melanoma. You could also see with different lung cancers, even metastasis like sarcomas, where tumors metastasize to the chest, then they grow into the pulmonary vein and pulmonary vein directly into the heart. So that pulmonary vein into the heart transit is something that occurs. And again, aggressive lung cancers, sarcomas, all can do it. So you can see why, and because of up and down and down and up, uh, and pulmonary veins is why so much of the tumors we see in the heart are going to be metastatic disease and not primary tumors, which as I mentioned are rare. I'll go back a second to angiosarcoma. I have some nice cases of infiltration of the pericardium. As I said, angiosarcoma is more common on the right side, particularly right atrium, but it could occur any part of the heart, but it's typically right-sided and then it may infiltrate and go all around the heart. So it's really going to be a variable appearance, so that becomes important. Um, what else can I tell you? In terms of um, tumors of the heart, primary or metastatic, you then want to look carefully at the lungs because these tumors often metastasize to the lung. Uh, so you're looking for lung mets. You also will look into the liver. Um, we also talk about lymphoma of the heart. There is a thing called primary lymphoma where it infiltrates the pericardium, maybe some of the chambers. That's pretty rare. Most of the time when you have lymphoma, it's lymphoma involving multiple different organs. So sometimes you see a bulky mass involving the pericardium and the cardiac chambers, and you go through a differential lung cancer, things like that. But you also need to think about lymphoma. Often when you see lymphoma involving the heart, uh, you'll look in the abdomen and you'll find more disease in the abdomen. When you look in the chest, you'll see a lot of adenopathy. So lymphoma of the heart, there is an entity of primary lymphoma of the heart that's pretty, uh, pretty rare. Uh, lymphoma involving the entire, the entirety of the heart growing from outside in, that's more common. And it's more common to also see involvement, mesenteric nodes, small bowel involvement, gastric involvement, liver involvement, splenic involvement. It's usually a more aggressive tumor. I mentioned about sarcomas. I mentioned the case yesterday, I showed up a sarcoma primary in the patient's left atrium. So you can see a bunch of sarcomas. Rhabdomyosarcomas are the most common tumor in children. You can see leiomyosarcomas. There's a whole range of sarcomas. People also talk about metastatic carcinoid to the heart. Um, you can get vascular lesions and you can be within the chambers or along the papillae. It's pretty, pretty uncommon, but it does occur. Um, now let's see, it's a good time to ask questions. Uh, what I would love to be able to do is, and we're working on it, Lily and Sarah and myself are working on trying to figure out how we can show more images because I think me describing everything is really good and then you'll come back and listen to the lecture, but I think I'd feel a lot better if you were seeing the cases I'm showing. And I, I can hold the picture here, but that's not gonna work. So let's see, Monteverdi, Apudia, and Saeed Kafati. So we'll say hello to them. So, um, you know, we do, uh, it's interesting, right now, we are getting people from over 200 countries to Facebook Live. We are constantly expanding. We're looking, um, I mentioned, we talked last night about cardiac tumors in part, just for a little bit. Uh, we were on Twitter Live. So what we do Twitter Live on Wednesday nights, 8 p.m. As long as you're a Twitter user, become a fan of CTSS, which of course is for free, and then you can come to our chat room and I'm there and Lily's there and a whole bunch of people from around the world get there and. We chit chat about uh, the latest and greatest within imaging. So um, that's probably the main things. Let me also just comment about uh, cardiac uh, involvement and malignancy. Uh, most patients who have cardiac involvement have significant disease, so it's not going to be the only site of disease, so look carefully. Usually it's aggressive. Interestingly, not surprisingly, a large amount of cardiac involvement is not seen on imaging but it's seen on autopsy. So you need to look very, very carefully to, uh, to look for those tumors. And Lily, by the way, just put up in our chat area, comments area, about our twitter.com. So we are trying to be everywhere and everywhere. I have lost track of time, um, so 
you know, we do this thing eight o'clock at night, so I have to, Lilia sends me it, that I don't forget, because I don't get home to about seven, and then you twiddle around, the next thing you know, you forgot eight o'clock. So we, we will be there, you, you're there, I'll be there. So um, those are kind of the main things. Um, again, as I'll, as I'll share with you, as I'll show you a bunch of cases, some are online already, but I'm putting together a talk uh, which I'm hopefully going to finish in the next two days. Then I'm going to record it. Uh, you'll see it sometime at the end of August. So it's a good, but there are a lot of, as I said, a lot of cases on CTSS Facebook page. And it's worthwhile looking at because I find that cardiac tumors are, are easily missed. Surely if you do non-contrast chest, it's easy to miss when they're subtle. Obviously anything super large you're not going to miss, but it, you need to do more. So. I know it's a little bit early, but no, 15 minutes, that's that's fine. I, I'll, I'll get my paycheck. Uh, not, not. But hopefully everybody enjoyed this talk. If you have any questions, feel free to give me, uh, ding me, and we'll, we'll pick up this chat somewhere. Okay, with that, have a great day.